Hello and welcome everyone to today's Public Works webinar, Developing a Mobile Strategy for Public Works Operations. My name is Mike Dyer and I'm a business development lead for Esri's local government team. Uh, joining me today are Jay Fowler and Mike Sweeney who are both uh, solution engineers uh, on the local government team. Uh, I understand that some of you that signed up for the webinar and added it to your Outlook calendar were showing a three-hour block of time for this webinar. Uh, rest assured, we're not going to go three hours today. Uh, just a few logistics before we get started. Please note on the right-hand side of your screen, you should have the Go to Webinar toolbar. There you will find a section for handouts where we've uploaded some relevant content and material that you're free to download. There's also an area for questions. Uh, please type in any questions you have for us throughout the presentation. Uh, I'll be monitoring this and at the end make sure that we have time to answer them. Uh, and as a reminder, this will be recorded and the recording will be made available uh, in about a week. This webinar is part of a series that Esri is offering this year on GIS and Public Works. Today we're going to focus on a suite of integrated Esri apps that collectively support workflows for efficient field operations. Uh, these field apps were developed to help organizations improve coordination and achieve operational efficiencies in field workforce activities. Uh, these apps can reduce or even replace your reliance on paper and they can ensure that everyone in the field and the office use the same authoritative data so that you can reduce errors, boost productivity, and save money. Our next seminar in June will focus on how public works organizations are turning drone captured images into imagery products using drone to map for ArcGIS. <clears throat> and we'll add additional topics for the summer and fall. To attend future webcasts or to view the recordings, slides, and additional resources for public works organizations, please visit go.esri.com forward slash pw webinars. You'll see that link again at the end of this webinar, and again, this presentation will be available to you within about a week. So Public Works is obviously a field-intensive business. The work includes surveying and inventorying assets, scheduled maintenance projects, responding to citizens' requests and complaints, or assisting in disaster planning, uh, response, and recovery. Field operations involves a lot of interconnected activities that often don't work well together. Uh, different tools are needed for coordinating workers, routing them to service calls, or getting accurate data back at the office. Many organizations are still buried in paper processes. Without a unified workflow, they're stuck with inaccurate and outdated data and manual processes. Other organizations may already be using some field tools like Collector for ArcGIS for data capture. It's important to recognize that there's more to field work than simply capturing the data. As GIS professionals, we help others get authoritative data into and out of the field and then merge it back into the organization's workflows to become geographic knowledge so it can power better decision making and problem solving. There's a real strategy and artistry to performing this critical operation in the most effective manner. The ArcGIS platform provides a unified workflow so that everyone from the field to the office is working with the same data in real time. This is done through a powerful but easy to use suite of apps that helps you to reduce paperwork, replace outdated workflows, and make smarter decisions. So as I mentioned, there's more to field work than just collecting or editing data. The five phases of field operations include planning, coordinating, navigating, capturing, and monitoring. So beginning at the top right of this circle, first we plan. Field work is expensive and it should be done as efficiently as possible. There should be planning and prioritization of what work gets done first, and this can be done at the desktop. Next, we coordinate the work to ensure that the proper work gets assigned to the proper crew and that workers stay organized and productive. Those crews 
then need to navigate to that work using the most efficient route possible. In the field, crews gather map-centric field data, they conduct surveys, and now they can collect imagery using drones. And finally, real-time data feeds of your organization's field activities are monitored to ensure a focus on top priorities. In this workflow, everyone is working with the same authoritative data, seamlessly and in real time. The ArcGIS apps for the field support this workflow. These include ArcGIS Pro for planning, Workforce for ArcGIS for coordination, Navigator for ArcGIS for navigating to the work. And then there's three options for data capture, Drone to Map for converting drone captured images to useful imagery products, Survey123 for creating surveys that support practical decision making, and Collector for ArcGIS for gathering map-centric data in the field. Operations Dashboard is used for monitoring. These apps are developed to work together. They work seamlessly together and can be implemented without writing any line of code. So if you're not supporting this entire workflow, I encourage you to consider expanding your field operations support across all these phases. So now we're going to show you how these apps work together in that seamless workflow around the scenario of hydrant inspection. And for that, I'm going to turn things over to my colleagues, Jay Fowler and Mike Sweeney. Hey, everybody. How are you all doing today? So, um, you know, as we're talking about this united workflow, uh, we're going to start out doing some planning today. Uh, one really important concept to grasp is that I am in the office. I'm kind of in a managerial role. Mike Sweeney will be out in the field. He'll be a field worker. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Um, another thing that I want to go ahead and tell you up front is we are working with this United Workflow today because there's a whole lot of power and return on investment when you return, when you use all of our applications together. All right, so for starters, we're going to be using ArcGIS Pro to plan. Uh, you can see that we have some blue hydrants on the map. Those are operable. We also have some red hydrants that are not operable. And it could be a really quick knee-jerk reaction to just send out some crews to fix all of our red hydrants. However, we want to prioritize using ArcGIS Pro. Uh, it makes a lot of sense to check out uh, if we have some very high-risk hydrants that are far away from other operable hydrants. To do this, we're going to run a model. What this model is doing is it's actually selecting all of our operable hydrants and forming a buffer around them. So it's going to be a 300-foot buffer. We're then going to take that and select all of the inoperable hydrants that fall outside of that buffer. Once we have that, we have our high-risk hydrants. So we know that those hydrants are farther away, and in case of an emergency like a fire, uh, it's going to be more difficult for our fire crews to get water because they aren't going to be able to run a hose. Now that we have that, we can share. So we're actually going to take this web map, and we have this wonderful symbology, and we're going to publish it out to ArcGIS Online. We can also share with certain groups. In this case, we can use our field crew group. So now that we're in ArcGIS Online, we have the ability to share this map with our organization and anybody who has a seat in ArcGIS Online. So it's not necessarily just the people in our organization who have ArcGIS desktop licenses. Right now, you can see on the map, we have some prioritized hydrants that we need to look at specifically. And we're going to go ahead and do that. It would be really easy at this point to save this map and share it accordingly and to go ahead and jump into Collector. But as we're saying today, we have this united workflow, the whole idea that the whole is greater than the sum of the parts, right? So instead, we're going to move ahead and coordinate using Workforce for ArcGIS. So I'm now creating this project in Workforce. What's going on behind the scenes is that Workforce is actually spinning up a couple of layers where we will have assignments, but also some web maps that we can customize that will make this product even more usable. 
For instance, maybe we want to add our hydrants into the web map so that we can see them as we're assigning workout and coordinating with our field crews. So to set up our workforce project, we're going to go ahead and assign uh, type. So in this case, inspect hydrants. We could add more types if we wanted to. In this case, we're just going to leave it at that. And we're going to proceed to adding some users. I'm going to add myself as a mobile worker. But I'm also going to add my colleague Mike Sweeney in as a mobile worker as well. And we can go down and we can look at our users that we've assigned. And once again, the idea being that today I'm the dispatcher, I'm a manager uh, in the office, and Mike Sweeney is going to be out in the field as a mobile worker. I want to go ahead at this point and tell you that with this workforce project, we don't have to set it up every time. We could continue to use this project again and again and again. We'd only go through this workflow if we were setting up a different project with different tasks and users. So as I've mentioned, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. This whole idea of pairing our applications together from the ArcGIS platform really comes in in Workforce for ArcGIS. We have app integration built in, and you can see we have Navigator for ArcGIS by default added. And we're going to go ahead and add in Collector for ArcGIS as well. So what I just did is I took a collector map that we've created for a very specific collection purpose, in this case, hydrant inspections, and I've linked it to our workforce project. You see that we can also link in Survey123 if we want to. Collector is a map-centric product for data collection, whereas Survey123 is form-based. Uh, if you have collectors who are more comfortable using a form, then Survey123 would be the perfect tool for you to integrate at, with Workforce at this time. We're also going to turn on location tracking. It's really important that we keep track of our workforce. We want to make sure they're safe while they're out in the field. Imagine if a storm rolled through, we could see if they were in the middle of a, uh, a field or a very isolated area, um, or we could see if they were close to a safe facility. So it's one thing to keep in mind, um, but also it helps us to actually assign out our tasks, right? Um, for instance, if we're assigning out a hydrant inspection and we had a field worker who was about a mile away and we had other field workers who were 20 miles away, it makes a whole lot more sense to give it to the field worker who is a mile away. Um, so that's really important to know. So we're going to proceed on and you can see we've we finished setting up this project, but I'm going to do one more thing as I mentioned earlier on. When we created the workforce project, it did some work behind the scenes. You can see I have this workforce hydrants folder that was automatically created in my ArcGIS Align organization. We can sort by type and see the different pieces of collateral that have been created using workforce. So we have a couple hosted feature layers and we have a couple web maps as well. We're going to go into this dispatcher web map and I want to add my hydrants in because I want to get some valuable information about my actual GIS assets. At this point, I could also change my base map and set my extent, and that's going to carry over into Workforce for ArcGIS. I'll go ahead and save this web map now. And moving back to Workforce, I'll open up my project. All right, so here we are. This is what Workforce for ArcGIS looks like. You can see I have my hydrants in here, and we're looking at the West Palm Beach area. Just to get you all started, I'm going to go ahead and add an assignment in. We have our inspection assignment type that we've added, and I'm going to assign it to myself. I'm going to click on the map to add it to that location and create the assignment. Once that completes, we can see some information about our assignment. And we can also go back and we can look at our worker 
and see that I currently have one assignment on the map. So this is uh, you know workforce in general. Um, there's some other stuff that I want to go ahead and bring up now. As you could just see, a whole lot of assignments were added to our map. Um, so what is going on in the background is my colleague Mike Sweeney just used a spreadsheet to import 100 assignments in the matter of a couple seconds. Very easy to do. So if you're using other enterprise systems, you can uh, create a spreadsheet or maybe you're tracking your assignments in a spreadsheet already you can easily import these into Workforce for ArcGIS. Uh, you know, um, Workforce can do some things better that other products can't do, definitely dealing with GIS assets and mapping in general. So it's a really great tool, really easy way to pull in data from other systems and create assignments. I'm gonna head, go ahead and use the geocoder to zoom to a specific area. And you can see we have our prioritized hydrants here in yellow on the map. I'm going to select those hydrants. You can see we have the hydrants here that we can click on and we can actually go and look at information about those hydrants, those assets. But we can also look at the assignments that have been added in uh, by my colleague Mike Sweeney. I'm going to go ahead and select those all and I'm going to actually assign those out to Mike Sweeney. And when we look at our workers, we can now see um, that Mike Sweeney has four current assignments. Um, so just to recap, you know, talking about this united workflow, we started out and we planned using ArcGIS Pro. We then moved over and we coordinated using Workforce for ArcGIS. In this situation, I have been uh, you know, the manager in the office, and now we're going to actually turn it over to our field crew. Mike Sweeney, he is out in the field. You can see that he is now active. He's outside in the sunshine, and I'm just going to go ahead and let him take it away. All right, so I should be sharing my screen right now. I just shared it, and uh, I have an iPad here that, um, can you see that? Jay, can you see my iPad? I can see it. Perfect, I agree, I feel good now. So, <clears throat> you know, the, as Mike Dyer kind of kicked things off in talking about this coordination phase, you know, it's very important to organize our work, which Jay did a great job there of, you know, looking through all the assignments, finding some that were bunched together, these four critical hydrants in this area, and then assigning them to me, and we need to keep, make sure that this work is all organized and that I'm productive. And I tell you, there's nothing I love more than a list. I'm a list maker and a list doer, right? I like to make my to-do list to done. So here I have uh, my mobile um, side of workforce, which Jay was using as a dispatcher to plan. Here in the field, I've got my tablet. I can see what work needs to be done. I can click on this first assignment that he's given me. And then once I click on it, it will zoom in and give me the detailed information that Jay had entered into the uh, into the assignments uh, place. Or actually, I had loaded in a spreadsheet earlier. And the first thing I want to do is I want to acknowledge to Jay that I've got this assignment. I'm aware that it's critical and I need to, to work on this. So um, that's displayed as that acknowledge button at the bottom. I can click that button. And then Jay, on his dispatch side, will show us later, that would have automatically uh, changed that it's been acknowledged that I know that I need to go work on that assignment. So here I have the assignment. I can interact with the map. I, it'll tell my where I am in relation to that. But I, the next step of this whole um, work uh, force management is, you know, let's navigate to it. We know where the work is. We know where I am. How's the most efficient way that I can get to that location, that man or the hydrant rather that needs to be worked on? So if you see uh, right to the right of where it says inspect hydrants, there's a little paper with an arrow. If I click on that, it'll bring up some options. And these are the options that Jay had turned on back in Workforce. It would set up the application, uh, application integration. So it makes it seamless that I can go from Workforce right into navigating to the assignment. So I've got my navigator software loaded on this machine, this tablet. Uh, it's loading the map for Florida. And I can get data. That's uh, either from, from Esri provides data or we can get a data for a state or a region or you can load your own data in there. 
here it's giving me a route to that, and I can even say start the navigation. This will start navigating, and we should get verbal uh, cues on how to turn, where to turn, and uh, this would help me find how to get from where I am to where the work needs to be done. Once I get there, I can also make use of the integration to launch into whatever uh, data collection software I want to use, and we have several options for that. Um, as well as the fact that a nice thing I can do with this navigation software is I can burn layers of my data into these maps. So here it's navigating me to the hydrants um, uh, 80368, one that we want to work with. And uh, the next step would be to go back to workforce. <clears throat> I'll go back to workforce. I found where I need to be. And now I really want to tell my um, dispatcher, Jay, that I'm starting work on this assignment. So I've started work on the assignment. And really, the next step is to do the data capture. And I've got multiple options I can use. In this instance, we decided that a uh, collector seemed like a, a good way to do it. We could use Survey123. And uh, again, using that application integration, I can click on that little uh, paper button. I can say, I need to collect that, that assignment. It knows where I am. It knows what uh, hydrant I'm standing in front of. It would select uh, that hydrant. You can zoom in a little bit closer. We can go ahead and select the hydrant. And when I click on the hydrant, it's giving me all the information. And this is the same information that Jay had added into the dispatch map. Uh, so we're looking at the same database, whether he's in the office or I'm in the field. I'm seeing all the same information. That's the hydrant. That's at 740 Burn Street. It's a Kennedy valve. Right now, it's set to priority. And those are the ones that Jay wanted me to go look at because those, those were the, the hydrants that we determined that were outside 300-foot buffer of an operating hydrant. And if there was a fire, God forbid, in this area, we'd want to um, make sure these are fixed so that we have water to supply to the fire. So I want to look at that hydrant and see what information we have. Um, some of the information I have is historical. I have um, multiple records when we've done different uh, inspections here. And I can click at those records and say, OK, the last time this was inspected, they measured the uh, water pressure to be 60 PSI. I got the hydrant ID. They stamped it at that time. We can go back and look at other historical records that are there and um, view those as well. We could also go back and look at um, any attachments that are there. In this case, it's a Kennedy um, valve. Um, maybe I'm not so familiar with the Kennedy valves. I'm used to working with the Mueller um, valves on the hydrants. So I might want to be able to refer to a manual. And I'm out here standing in front of the hydrant. I shouldn't have to walk back to my truck to get the manual, I should have it at my fingertips. And I have an electronic device that will allow me to get that. I can scroll down to, you know, how do I, what problems might I encounter? What's the maintenance plan for this? So I would, you know, follow that plan to use my grease gun to grease the, the hydrant and replace the O-rings, you know, whatever needs to be done with that. Additionally, you can attach other documents as well. So I could have a document that maybe is a photograph, and that is a beautiful hydrant, if I must say, you know, don't you think? So we want to go and finish our editing of this. So we're going to first of all add a, a hydrant maintenance record. And I want to fill out the information here that who did the inspection. That was me, Mike. <clears throat> and what did I do there? Uh, I needed to grease it. Yes, it was required to lube it. And we've got a nice pick list I can choose from. I don't have to worry about typing in different values. Uh, Jay likes to type in Y, and I like to spell it out. And then we do a, a, a report later on and you get multiple values for really the same same thing. So we can enter information for the editing there. I'll submit that. That's going to send that update back. And then uh, finally, I want to go back to the record itself. And I want to change that um, setting from being uh, operable, being a priority valve, meaning it's a valve that doesn't operate. It's a high priority that we get that fixed. Now that I've made the repair, I want to change the status of that from it's uh, being a priority to being true that it is actually an operable valve. So when Jay reruns that planning stage to in the model that he ran, we'd be able to generate a buffer of 300 feet around this uh, hydrant, and we would see that you know we have a better coverage area for doing um, doing fire protection. Now the last step I want to do is I want to let Jay know that I've completed that uh, work. So from collector, I want to go back to workforce where I had started and where we had um, you know acknowledged first we started now I want to tell my finished that uh, work there 
And we can see that my list, and I told you I love to make to-done lists, not to-do lists. Now my to-do list is down to three hydrants. So I then follow that same process that I would move on to the next hydrant. I'd acknowledge I'm going to do that. I'd navigate to it. I'd do my work. I'd tell them I'm done, and I would process my way through that list. But this gave us a great way, as Mike again said, to be organized and productive in the field. So I have a list of things to do. Jay can keep tabs on where I am, how I'm working through my day, and then I'm getting things done. So with that, I am going to turn it back over to Jay. All right. Thank you so much, Mike. All right. I'm going to change the presenter to you, Jay. Sure thing. Okay, so we are back in the office now. Uh, so to recap, you know, we planned using Pro, we coordinated using Workforce. Uh, then Mike Sweeney in the field used Navigator to get to his asset. He captured data um, using Collector for ArcGIS. And now we're on to the monitor stage of our United Workflow for field operations. Um, the first application I want to show you for monitoring is Workforce. So we've looked at this already. Uh, but you can see now that there's been two-way communication between myself and Mike Sweeney on the field crew. Uh, so I'm back in the office. I can see that that hydrant that we prioritized that was in this bottom right-hand corner has changed um, from yellow, so it's no longer a priority. I can also see that the assignment that I was given to Mike Sweeney has been completed. So I'm going to look at this assignment, and I can see it's complete. So that communication has occurred. Um, so I know what's going on, and that's a wonderful feeling when you're in management. I can look at all these uh, assignments that we have. It's over 100. I can filter them. For instance, maybe I want to look at everything we've completed for the day. Um, so Workforce gives you some really great tools to slice and dice uh, your assignment data and you know, look at it in many different ways. As we monitor, um, we're actually going to go ahead and move over to another uh, software product of ours, Operations Dashboard. It's a really great tool um, for monitoring and tracking and responding to your assets. Gain a common operational picture, so a single current view of your assets, your data, uh, data streams, the weather, anything that might be important to you uh, out in the field or when you're monitoring and managing a situation so that you can direct your resources accordingly. Uh, this tool that I'll show you, we have some pre-configured widgets set up. However, it's a very configurable tool. So you can configure the operations dashboard for whatever purpose you might have. Um, and there's some great literature online about how to do that. Uh, so for starters, uh, what we're looking at here on this map is uh, some fire zones. And we've taken the hydrant inspection uh, percentage completion and we've aggregated it to these zones. So you can see the darker blue areas have a higher percentage of completed inspections, and the kind of tan areas, uh, much less inspection completion. Um, so that can tell us a few things. There, there's definitely some disparity uh, geographically in what areas are having high percentage completions of inspections. Uh, so maybe there's uh, you know, something we want to put in place to round up these other areas that aren't getting as much attention. Next, uh, we have a inspection completion status percentage system-wide. We're at 46%. This is a really easy uh, to interpret summary statistic that tells us you know, some very valuable information. Finally, at the bottom, we have the system-wide average flow. This is the perfect example of using operations dashboard to show off a key performance indicator value. Uh, so, you know, as an organization, you set goals, and a key performance indicator is a measurable value that indicates how successful you are at achieving these business objectives. In this case, we've gone in and we've set a goal to have a system-wide average flow of 750 gallons. Um, per minute. And it's really easy to see with this up arrow and this number that we're achieving that. So if you ask six people within your organization, how are we doing with our system-wide average flow, using this common operational picture provided by the operational dashboard, it's really easy to say, we're doing good. We're achieving our goal. Um, so you get everybody on the same page in that way. Moving on to the second panel. Uh, we can see the hydrants that have been inspected system-wide overall using this gauge widget at the top. 
We can also click around on these zones and see how many hydrants have been inspected in the individual zones. Finally, we can see all of the non-working hydrants within our system. Uh, you'll have to take my word for it, but just a couple of minutes ago, this number was 12. Uh, but thanks to the great field work of Mike Sweeney, we've reduced it by one and we'll keep on working at that. On our last panel, we have some pre-configured queries. It's really nice to build your own query, but it's even nicer sometimes to have a one-click executable query. And this way we can look at all of the inspections that have been done within the last 30 days really easily. I'm going to select those and we can go ahead and see the average flow for our selection, in this case the inspections within the last 30 days. And we can also see those individual hydrants, those individual assets. I'm going to click on one. We can highlight that on the map. But we can also show a pop-up. Uh, and get a little bit more information about this. So this takes us all the way through the field operations workflow. It's a united workflow. One thing we really want to impart with you is that when you pair these applications together provided by the RTS platform, you can get some very powerful results and a really great return on your investment. Um, you'll notice that we did this whole workflow from start to finish using zero pieces of paper. It was all digital. We didn't write any code, it's all configurable, so that's a really important thing to remember. So the whole idea here is that our applications that participate in this United workflow, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. It's great if you're using Collector, it's great if you're using an operations dashboard, but when you start linking these together and pairing them together, that's where you'll get some really valuable outcomes. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mike Dyer to take us home. All right, Jay. Thanks, Jay and, and Mike. So uh, a lot of organizations are already adept at using mobile technology and services for efficiency and communication, but many organizations still lack a comprehensive mobile strategy. Um, mobile deployment and the data collected um, with mobile devices is often piecemeal. Um, um, meaning use of it and data gathered is siloed and it's not incorporated into any organization-wide workflow. Um, a, a mobile strategy requires a simple integrated approach that ensures that data continuity, quality, and the ability to easily share information across the organization. So Jay and Mike showed through the Hydrant Inspection scenario how the Esri apps work together as a suite of tools to support all five phases of the field operations workflow. So using ArcGIS Pro, we conducted a simple analysis to help prioritize which hydrants should be inspected first. Uh, then using Workforce App, we made work assignments for field crews. Uh, those field crew members use the Navigator app to route themselves to their assignments. The crew members perform their inspections and use the collector app to edit information about the hydrants in the field. And our progress on hydrant ins inspection is monitored using the operations dashboard. All of these apps work together seamlessly uh, and they're implemented without writing any line of code. For those of you that all are already on the ArcGIS platform, you have access to all of these apps now. Uh, the only ones that would incur additional cost are Navigator and Drone to Map, which we didn't touch on today, but we'll touch on that next month. Um, the best place to go to learn more about these apps is our Apps for Everyone web pages. Just go to esri.com forward slash apps, and you can browse them by category. We have apps for the field, which we shared with you today, but there's also apps for the office, apps for engaging your community, as well as uh, uh, app builders for, for developers. Um, I'd also in, I'd like to invite you to download a new resource, uh, Building a Mobile Government uh, Strategy with GIS. Uh, the Esri industry, this Esri industry perspective is available from GovLoop at the address shown here. 
Uh, this resource provides additional insight on what a mobile strategy at state and local government looks like. It addresses how governments can get there and shares case studies on how several government organizations transform their operations by geospatially enabling their mobile um, solutions. Finally, uh, a note about our Public Works community. So in addition to our solution site, as we maintains um, uh, a Public Works industry page with up-to-date uh, user success stories, white papers, as well as special offers. Um, we also, uh, I'd also like to make you aware of our Public Works Meetup site, which is a social gathering to discuss and demonstrate geospatial technologies in the broadly defined public works space. So that's roads and highways, traffic engineering, solid ways, parks and rec, etc. And at this time, uh, I, I think I'll um, uh, check and see if we have any questions. Um, um, we do have a few questions that have that have that have come in. Um, uh, you know, one of the one of the common questions that we get asked uh, about these apps, and I'll ask uh, Mike and Jay to chime in uh, on helping answer these questions. But one of the common question is, you know, do these apps um, will these apps work in a in a disconnected mode? I can jump in real quick. Um, so. Yes, all of the uh, field applications that Mike Sweeney was using today, um, Navigator and Collector for ArcGIS work disconnected while you're out in the field. We know you might be in areas with uh, poor cell reception or network connectivity. Um, so Navigator in particular, that's a very unique quality that Navigator has that you can not only continue to use turn-by-turn -turn directions, but you can actually get new turn-by-turn -turn directions to an address even if you don't have connection to the internet. Uh, Workforce, which Mike Sweeney was using on his mobile device, does not work disconnected, but the idea is that you're going to be checking that when you come into the office in the morning or periodically throughout the day when you're in those areas um, where you know you will have cell coverage. Okay. Um, I, I think this question might be referring to um, uh, Mike's field demo. So are the attachments and photos stored in the cloud uh, or ArcGIS online or on an internal city server? Yeah, so um, they are stored in this situation in ArcGIS online. Um, but if you're using portal, they could be stored on your um, own infrastructure. Mike, do you have anything to add to that? Um, no, I agree with what you're saying. So it's it's in the cloud and ArcGIS Online uh, for this particular demonstration. Okay. Uh, another question, does Navigator use credits? It does not. Um, so it, it's a premium app. Uh, you pay for a seat in it annually, and it does not consume credits. Okay. Um, does Workforce um, have integration with CityWorks? And if so, how robust is the API for integration? So um, currently, you know, what, what I've seen is that Workforce is primarily uh, going to work if, like today, when we took a spreadsheet and we passed it into Workforce, um, that's a really good workflow for pushing tasks into Workforce for ArcGIS. Um, you could add assets, for instance, if you had a feature service uh, for CityWorks, you could add it into the web map in a similar workflow uh, that I did today, adding the hydrants in, so you could add in your assets um, and view them in that way in Workforce. Uh, another question, how can the field worker know that they've been assigned a project? Is that an email notification or a text alert? Yeah, so um, first of all, checking uh, the app, and as Mike said, um, you know, checking the list. Uh, Mike, do you want to maybe chime in with what happens when you get a critical task assigned to you? Yeah, so when you're in, in Workforce on my device, I uh, have a continual list of the assignments I get, and then when there is, and it's constantly pulling in the background, it's a 30-second interval to see if you've got new or additional assignments, 
So it would pick up that I've got a new assignment and that it's critical, and so I would be made aware of that, and then I could, you know, make that my top priority to go deal with that assignment. Yeah, and it'll also um, actually add an alert in the case of like a critical assignment. It's going to essentially ping you, give you a little alert, and make it very highly visible to you as a mobile user. Okay. Um, so another question, uh, one of our requirements for public works and airport inspection data uh, collected with collector is to create physical reports, uh, you know, for example, uh, for FAA submission. So is there a suggestion for creating reports um, uh, with, 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 with um, uh, yeah, so is there, is there a, um, um, You know, are there any suggestions for creating reports with data and a map um, for collected features for ArcGIS or ArcGIS online hosted data? So I mean, that, that data is held in a feature service. You could access that data from, from either ArcMap or ArcGIS uh, Pro. And you could then take that data and put it into a table or um, with, with ArcGIS desktop, you could use our reporting tools that are, that are there to generate a report. Jay, do you have anything else to add on that? No, that sounds that sounds pretty good. All right. <clears throat> okay. Um, another question: What products partnerships do you have that could close the circle, i.e., work orders slash time cards? I do not necessarily have an answer for that at the moment. Um, I don't know, Mike. Do you have any thoughts on that? No, we I mean, we have a lot of uh, partnerships with with different uh, Esri business partners that are constantly working to extend the RGS platform. Um, so I'm not completely aware of of one that's doing that, but there's probably someone cooking it up that uh, is right around the corner, though. So the asker of that question. So uh, we have your your contact information. We can uh, uh, we can address that further and 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 follow up with you. Um, uh, another question. You mentioned using an iPad, but what other types of field units can a uh, collector be used with? So collector uh, can be used with uh, any iOS device. It can be used with Android devices, and Jay, I think we looked this up yesterday, Windows devices are also supported for Collector, is that right? Correct. Um, the other uh, field applications were only iOS and Android, but Collector was um, all three. So you can find that application in the appropriate app store, so the iTunes store, the um, Google Play store, the Windows store. And it, to make it simple to find them, you can go to the Esri or ArcGIS Marketplace. So marketplace.arcgis.com, search for collector, and within that you'll get links that will take you to the appropriate um, marketplace for the uh, operating system you're looking for the application for. Okay. Thanks, Mike, and, and thanks, Jay, and uh, uh, thank you, everyone, for, uh, for your questions. Um, uh, just as a reminder, uh, please join us for our next webinar, which will be on June 15th, when the topic will be Turn Your Drone Imagery into GIS Ready Data. Uh, to register for future webcasts or to view the recording slides or additional resources for public works organizations, please visit go.esri.com forward slash pw dash webinars. Uh, and let me also mention that Esri will be in attendance at the upcoming APWA Public Works Expo this summer in Orlando. Uh, Esri staff will be on hand, and I encourage you and your colleagues to visit our booth to see the latest offerings for the public works community. So in a follow-up to today's webinar, you'll receive a quick survey to provide us with your feedback. Uh, we'll use your feedback to help guide our future events in this series. So um, I want to thank you for your time. Appreciate you joining us today. Thank you very much.